Chapter 1. In Honour of Fred I can't speak for Fred, and the reason I can't speak for him is because he's dead. He killed himself a short few months ago, and he wasn't even 35. None of it made sense on paper. Fred was a highly successful young man in a very lucrative field. He never confessed to me how much he made, but he had to be pulling in at least $200,000 a year. He had just recently completed his master's, which would have only earned him more, and he was the epitome of a ladies' man. Tall, dark, jacked and handsome, he surmounted the two largest hurdles any young man faces in life, money and women, and with most of his life in front of him, anyone who knew him was happily envious of the life he would lead. But what raised my brow, what quietly nagged me in the back of my mind, was when Fred would occasionally text me something about any one of the myriad of women he was dating. I didn't think much of it. Perhaps he was just a younger man obsessing about women as men are prone to do. Perhaps he just wanted to impress me. Perhaps he had a concern about a particular woman he was dating. But these texts never articulated into a pointed question. And so, whatever the underlying reason, I just dismissed it as there was an abundance of empirical evidence Fred had no problem getting women. And so, I wrote it off as hormones driving a younger man to worry more than he ought. But now, in hindsight, it does make sense. And while on paper, Fred had everything, he didn't. Fred checked all the boxes a young man alive in America could check. Tall, good-looking, great physique, super intelligent, an exceptional career, good finances, a steady supply of pretty twenty-something girls. But out of all the girls, I can't remember him mentioning one of them as being wife material or long-term girlfriend potential. He dated one years ago, but she went on to become an equally successful professional woman. He dated another, but she was a foreigner and would be returning to her home country to complete her masters. There was the cute Asian girl he posed with in the ocean a la Tom Selleck in the opening to Magnum P.I. And there were at least a dozen others he mentioned in passing, but none of them achieved the level of that girl or special or oh my god Aaron, I just met this girl. And though Fred is dead and we will never know, I'm going to bet at least one of the reasons he isn't here anymore is because even though he was surrounded by women, not one would make him a wife. Not one would become a long-term girlfriend. Certainly, they were outstanding women, beautiful and accomplished in nearly all regards, but forming a family was not in their priority list. And neither was getting married. And though Fred was the ideal candidate to be a husband and a father, he was ironically relegated to being alone in a crowd of beautiful women. An outstanding, truly superior specimen of a man surrounded by beautiful women who tragically had no long-term interest in him. Unfortunately, Fred is not alone. Though he is the only one I know to have ended his life, I have ran into hundreds, if not thousands of men through consulting, conversation, and the internet who are also wrestling with a life without women. On the other side of the coin, I have had a surprising number of female clients who voice the same concerns as these men. But what neither recognize is we are now entering a post-marriage, a post-partner world where the opposite sex is no longer the primary objective of the other. And while my robotic empirical economist mind may have come to accept this cryptic reality, the vast majority of people have not. They are still heavily, though unconsciously, invested in what their biological human hard wiring compels them to. Even though those desires are largely unreciprocated by the opposite sex, and thus the quandary nearly every person in the first world finds themselves in, what do you do in a life without the opposite sex? One of the most poignant quotes I ever heard was from a pastor, John C. Maxwell. 
disappointment is the difference between expectations and reality. And what I like about this is the permanency, the irrefutability of reality. Originally, I hated reality because it often conflicted with what I wanted. But once I understood that reality is reality, and there is no disputing it, no matter how much I wanted something else, it made life a lot easier because I was no longer confused or disillusioned about achieving something that was not possible. And in no longer attempting or desiring something that was not possible, I not only drastically improved my life achieving things that were, but also no longer suffered the misery and disappointment that came from having expectations that didn't match reality. And this is the situation nearly every person under 40 alive in the first world today must face and ultimately accept. A plurality, if not outright majority of you, will never be happily married. A plurality, if not outright majority of you, will never be married, period. The majority of members of the opposite sex are either unwilling or unable to provide you the quality spouse you require. And many of you will have to accept your life will not entail a spouse or family. And whereas your original, visceral instinct would be to argue against this or convince the opposite sex to deliver what you want, that is not the point of the menu as that is not going to happen. The point of the menu is for you to accept the uncomfortable truth that the opposite sex generally does not have an effective interest in marrying you, and in understanding this, it behooves you to look at the menu of life, to find alternative purpose and meaning in life before you die. Because if you don't, you are guaranteed to make your one finite life on this planet miserable and an ultimate waste, or worse, end up like Fred. I miss Fred, as many of those who knew him do too, and I cannot even begin to fathom what his family is going through. But painful as it is, we need to take a cold, calculated, but above all else, accurate look at what the sexes are willing, or not willing, to do for each other. And in light of the fact that commitment and love from the opposite sex is likely not on the table for many of you, we must find other reasons to live and enjoy our lives. I can guarantee you that's what Fred would have wanted and what I wish we could have given him. Rest in peace, Fred. Your internet buddies really miss you.